Republicans, by saying to President Obama, we will only raise the debt ceiling, and by the way, this kind of a blackmail demand or extortion demand has never ever, from the George Washington administration until two years ago, has never ever been made before in history by any Congress. So uh, what they've said to President Obama is, we will default the United States, which is a violation of the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, by the way, which says that the full faith and credit of the United States shall not be questioned. We will default the full faith and credit of the United States if you do not delay Obamacare for a year, in other words, deny health insurance to, you know, 40 million people, give us the Keystone XL pipeline so that we can take this very, very toxic oil sludge from the tar sands of California, or tar sands of Canada, rather, and uh, get it down to the Gulf Coast where it can be refined, all the poisons and things can be taken out of it and dumped into the air of the United States. And then the uh, refined gasoline and diesel fuel can be shipped to China, England, Brazil, and Mexico. Demand number two. Demand number three, that uh, you've got to dial back the regulations by the EPA so that the Koch brothers and other companies that own these uh, refineries, they can dump more poison in the air and they can make more profit. They can operate more uh, less expensively. And number four, that you stop your oversight of the big banks by blowing up the Consumer Protection Bureau, Elizabeth Warren's creation. Stop doing that to those banksters on Wall Street. Nothing in there for the average American. Right? There's something in there for Wall Street billionaires. There's something in there for oil billionaires. There's something in there for uh, China, for Mexico, for England. Uh, but for the average American, the only thing they're going to get out of this is that their banks are more likely to blow up their economy again and that their gas prices are going to go up. So how is it possible that people think like that? Okay, this is where geeky science comes in. Let's get geeky on the lack of empathy. Have you ever wondered how a Wall Street CEO or one of these Republican politicians can sleep at night knowing that they just laid off hundreds of thousands of workers and destroyed their lives or just denied health insurance to 30 million people and people are going to die? Have you asked yourself ever how a Republican can stand for 21 hours straight arguing that poor people don't deserve health care in the richest country in the world, the United States of America? Well, scientists may have found some answers to your questions. Sociopaths and psychopaths often lack feelings of empathy or guilt or remorse. And until now, scientists have been unsure about the neurological reasons for why sociopaths and psychopaths lack empathy. And in fact, actually sometimes get pleasure from other people's pain. Well, now it turns out that when people with psychopathy think about others in pain, the brain areas necessary for feeling empathy and compassion for other people fail to become active. They fail to connect with other important parts of the brain involved in processing and decision-making. To reach their findings, scientists took MRIs of the brains of 121 prison inmates in a medium-security prison. Each of the study participants was shown pictures that illustrated physical pain, like a finger being caught in a door. The participant was asked then to imagine that this accident had happened to themselves and then imagine again that it had happened to somebody else. Then the participant was assessed with a diagnostic tool called a PCLR in order to identify their degree of psychopathic tendencies. Next, the participants were divided into three groups, highly, moderately, and weakly psychopathic. Here's what they found. When the highly psychopathic studies participants imagined pain to themselves, they showed a typical neurological response in the brain regions associated with empathy for pain. But when these highly sociopathic people imagined others in pain, those pain brain regions failed to become active. Those that were more psychopathic showed an increased response in what's called the ventral stri striatum region of the brain an area associated with pleasure when imagining others in pain. The findings of the study suggest that those with higher levels of psychopathy 
may actually enjoy seeing others in pain. So there you have it. I mean, this is actual, you know, biophysiology. This is neurology. This is, I mean, they, 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 they put these people on an MRI machine and looked into their brains and said, okay, what's going on? And what they found is that this, it's about 1% of the population, but there are certain areas that kind of self-select for psychopaths. It's like over 20% of the prison population. And I don't know what percentage of the Republican caucus are psychopaths. I don't know that anybody's ever done a good study. But I would be willing to bet anything that it's higher than the, among the Democratic caucus. And we know, I mean, if you know, Fortune or Forbes magazine, some years back, a couple of years back, we did a whole show on it here. We had the author on it and everything. Um, did this study about how psychopaths can be very, very successful at senior levels of business particularly in the banking industry where, you know, they just destroy people's lives, throw them out of their houses and, you know, walk off with lots and lots of money. It turns out that not only can they sleep at night, not only do they not feel other people's pain, but when they imagine the consequences of their actions causing pain to other people, they feel pleasure. It activates their pleasure centers. I mean, this is, this is an amazing piece of research. Which raises the question, how do we deal with psychopaths in our society? I mean, we know how to deal, sort of, with psychopaths who express their psychopathology in ways that we call criminal. Psychopaths who beat other people up. Psychopaths who shoot or kill people, psychopaths who rob, rape, torture, stuff like that. We know how to deal with them. We put them in jail. We separate them. We segregate them from the rest of society. But what about the high-functioning psychopaths? What about the ones who will make a business decision or a political decision knowing that it's going to cause people severe pain? That it's going to lead to, well, as the BBC study that I've shared with you several times, you know, uh, in fact, here's the, uh, this is the report, the BBC reported on this, Wednesday, 18 September 2002, is a hundred year longitudinal study done, and the conclusion, overall, they say the figures suggest that 35,000 people would not had, have died had the conservatives not been in power. All right, this is a study on suicides caused by conservative economic policies in the UK and Australia. It turns out that these folks, when they make the decision that they know is going to cause people to commit suicide, it's going to cause families to fall apart, it's not just that you know they can look themselves in the mirror and then go to sleep. It's that they actually feel pleasure. What do we do about this as a society? Because our business structure has said that what they are doing is legal. It's perfectly legal for the banksters to rip people off. Or if it's not illegal, we're at least not enforcing the law. And it's perfectly legal to be a conservative Republican politician. What do we do? 888-900-3393. 888-900-3393. 